Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Medical Microbiology series. This video is all about one of the most recognised medically significant bacteria, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which is a common cause of nosocomial infections. It is often attributed to contamination of water systems, food or drug factories. Pseudomonas members are gram-negative bacilli and are widely spread in soil, water, on plants and in other generally moist environments. They rarely exist as part of the normal microbiota in humans, but may be present in small amounts on the skin or the gastrointestinal tract. They are considered to be mainly pathogenic organisms to humans where they cause infections. Pseudomonas species are characterized as obligate aerobic organisms that require oxygen for growth. They are also pigmented which gives them a coloured appearance on many types of culture media. The most distinguished species that produce these coloured pigments are Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Putida and Fluorescens. These three have a shared ability to produce a yellow pigment due to pyoverdin or fluorescein pigments. Besides these yellow pyoverdin pigments, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the only species that can produce blue pyocyanin pigments, which leads to a unique production of fluorescent green colonies due to the combination of the yellow pyoverdin and the blue pyocyanin pigments. In addition to the coloured pigments produced by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, it can also be distinguished by its ability to grow at high temperatures, around 42 degrees Celsius which Pseudomonas putida and fluorescens can't do. It may also be distinguished by its ability to reduce nitrates. To differentiate between Pseudomonas fluorescens and putida, a gelatin hydrolysis test can be used. In this test, only P. fluorescens will be positive due to the production of a gelatinase enzyme, which results in liquefaction of the test medium. According to its pathogenicity, Pseudomonas aeruginosa is the most dangerous species to infect humans, as both fluorescens and putida rarely cause infections. They are instead widely used as biocontrol agents in agriculture to take advantage of their natural presence in the soil, water and moist plant surfaces. Here they prevent pathogenic microorganisms like fungi and nematodes from growing and help plants' roots to provide growth hormone producing precursors. For now, we'll focus on Pseudomonas aeruginosa. As previously mentioned, these organisms are fundamentally present in the environment, which helps it to cause nosocomial infections. This occurs either by device-associated infections through hospital instruments, such as catheterization or tracheostomy, or by environmental conditions such as high humidity or inefficient air conditioner filters. One of the defining features of Pseudomonas aeruginosa is that it doesn't require nutritional elements for growth, so it can easily survive in any stagnant water, in foods, or in factory water pipes, leading to the production of biofilms on these surfaces, which can help to disperse the bacteria to other areas. This is especially important in pharmaceutical industries because water is an essential raw material in the production of medicines. For these reasons, and the fact that these organisms are often multi-drug resistant, infections can be very difficult to treat. Infections caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa are usually superficial, often affecting wounds which can develop a purulent greenish pus around skin, nails or the outer ear. People who frequently wear contact lenses are at particular risk of infections to the eyes, which can lead to more serious partial blindness. These organisms grow particularly well on skin and mucosal membranes, which makes it especially important that they are not found in any topical medicines, such as creams, ointments or nasal solutions. This type of skin infection is considered to be localised due to the formation of a biofilm which adheres to the cells strongly. However, as soon as the bacteria enter the bloodstream via enzymes, toxins or virulence factors, it can lead to systemic infections before eventually settling in its target location, the lungs. 
The lungs are the best place for Pseudomonas aeruginosa infection because they are obligate aerobes. Here it causes further local infections and can lead to serious complications, especially in those with cystic fibrosis. Most nosocomial infections occur in immunocompromised patients and depends on the type of contaminated device used. For example, it can cause respiratory tract infections through the use of ventilators, urinary tract infections through catheterization, or wound infections from surgical instruments. If the infections are able to spread enough and persist in the bloodstream, patients may also suffer from meningitis or endocarditis. One thing to remember is that 60% of cystic fibrosis complications are caused by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, as well as infections of the immunocompromised and those with previous respiratory tract infections. In these patients, infection is very dangerous and may be fatal in critical cases. In the next video, we will explain the lab work concerning Pseudomonas aeruginosa, which includes how to identify and differentiate these bacteria from other gram-negative species and the virulence factors which make them resistant to many disinfectants and antibiotics. That's all for now though. I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks for watching.